Thank you and welcome. My name is George Trianis. I'm a professor at the law school and associate dean for strategic planning here, as well as associate dean for research at the university. And I'm absolutely delighted uh, personally and as well on behalf of the institution to welcome you all here. And I'm looking forward to a tremendous day of activity and, and exchange. Um, uh, it, it couldn't be at a more uh, uh, at a better time for the law school to have an event like this and to host it here uh, because it really uh, meets the intersection of two very dynamic programs that uh, we have begun with a series of initiatives. The one is a, a fairly dramatic increase in the amount of activity, both research and teaching, in the area of uh, global legal practice. We have a new course based on case studies uh, for our students. We have a variety of overseas courses that are starting. We are bringing in more visiting scholars and other experts coming to the law school from uh, other countries in the world. Uh, this is a very exciting se series of initiatives for us. The other uh, uh, part is in law and technology. We have a, we've, all, we've had for a while a tremendous program in law science and technology, but we are uh, in, in, uh, moving it in several new directions. Uh, the use of technology in legal practice is an exciting uh, new direction. There are a number of startups that have uh, begun here uh, and have become quite influential. Pro issues of intellectual property, of the internet, of technology, they're really at the center of uh, Stanford Law School, just as uh, they should be given our location in Silicon Valley. Uh, let me, though, say something specifically about Brazil, because I have to say I teach in this room quite often, and I've never felt as much energy as I feel this morning in this room. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have uh, a, a, a huge or a grow and a growing contingent of students from Brazil who come here to do their graduate work. About one out of seven of our graduate students last year were from Brazil uh, in the post-JD classes for the LLMs and other graduate pr uh, programs. That's huge. Uh, fortunately, also, it helps us with the fact that our JD students, our US native JD students, have a, a, a dramatically increased interest in Latin America and in Brazil in particular. In fact, because of their demand, we are now offering a course in the winter about the legal aspects of deals in Latin America where Brazil plays an important role and is being taught by a visiting professor from FGV Law in Sao Paulo. Uh, the students are very, very excited about this. It will also involve an overseas trip for them down to Sao Paulo to meet with leaders of the business and legal community uh, down there. And this is just the start of, of our initiative uh, there. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to uh, hold you anymore because uh, I've looked at the, uh, the agenda and I have to congratulate both Marguerite uh, and Evan for putting together such a distinguished series of, of panels. And I just hope they live up to their billing uh, uh, during this day. So without further delay, let me ask uh, Evan uh, to come down and to introduce uh, uh, Marguerite and the program. Thank you very much on behalf of the law school. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the third annual uh, Brazil in the 21st Century Conference, which is a joint Rock Center and Bay Brazil event. Uh, it is actually amazing to see this event grow over the years. I don't know how many of you came to the first and second, but this is definitely the biggest crowd that we have. And just the content, the speakers, the panels, the audience just get keeping bigger and better every year. And it is also an honor and privilege to have so many public authorities this year. Uh, Mauro Vieira, the Ambassador of Brazil to the United States, is going to be with us. Virgilio Almeida, the Information Technology Secretary from the Ministry of Science and Technology of Brazil. And Leonardo Pereira, who is the Head of Entrepreneurship Investment Funds from the Brazilian Development Bank. So that is a great accomplishment, and I think it's a great thing that we can have them here in Silicon Valley and especially at Stanford. We also have a great uh, agenda. We, we got was some of the leading practitioners in the areas of di digital marketplace entrepreneurship, the venture capital investors. So let me congratulate Marguerite 
uh, for her phenomenal work and effort in putting this together, and this is really remarkable. Maybe join in our program. I've actually, I've actually known Marguerite for many years, and when we first met, there were actually no real connections, organizations, or formal bridges between Silicon Valley and Latin America. I'm actually originally from Chile, so we used to discuss the lack of this kind of forums, and so I remember talking to people about Chile or Brazil or Latin America, and people used to tell me, well, it's a great place for vacation, for holidays, but if, they, if you want to do business, you got to go to China, you got to go to India, you got to go to Asia, and it was very frustrating. Um, so it is a big pleasure to see how Bay Brazil has grown. Uh, it's generated real gravitas in the community, and we are very happy to be co-hosting this event about Brazil at Stanford for the third year in a row with a, in, in a, row with a full crowd. So why would the Rock Center be interested in co-hosting this event? Well, as you may know, the Rock Center is a joint initiative between Stanford Law School and the Graduate School of Business, and our focus is in corporate governance research. Um, and, you know, governance is the relations or the connections between shareholders, board of directors, and management, but also many stakeholders. And even though we started very US focused, uh, about four, year, four years ago, we started doing international programs. And in fact, the first program that we had, executive education program for directors, was in Brazil back in 2011. So we went there in Sao Paulo. Uh, then we went to Rio. So um, from there, we've grown to many other countries. So we have now programs in Chile. We've got programs in Mexico, in Canada, and China, and Hong Kong. So, but Brazil is a very special place. And um, you know, not only do we do corporate directors education, but we've also increased in institutional, uh, institutional investors. We've got VC programs. So the discussions today are relevant not only because of its regional importance, but also because of the content. And I think you know, this is a very uh, important aspect for us. Um, so one of the things that I want to uh, also talk is you know, I actually just came back from seven weeks in Latin America. Um, and it has become a bit of a tradition to talk about Brazil when I get back. And uh, the reality was that in 2012, when we did the first program, there was a lot of buzz and excitement about Brazil. Uh, but as we all know, the political and, and you know, economic situation is getting a little bit uh, more challenging. Uh, there's more social unrest. There's many protests across the country. Many question marks uh, concerning its economy, capital markets. And to be fair, this is not only an issue for Brazil, it's an issue in all over Latin America, and actually it's a global issue. But what I think is important for, for today is to talk about the future, uh, talk about the cutting edge of things, and the fact that we have such a big crowd here shows that you're really thinking in a global context. Uh, so the idea is to you know, think big, uh, think beyond the day-to-day -day political contingency, if we can, in order to succeed in what we want to do. Uh, and, and this is what this conference is trying to achieve. Um, and I think there's no better place to do it than at Stanford. This is a very unique university. We're in the middle of Silicon Valley, a region that is exceptional, even within the United States, where really all the big dreams are dreamt. And this is what will make you know, the country grow. This is what will make the future better. And I cannot emphasize enough um, how relevant this kind of forum is to get together and think about how to improve the country. So on behalf of, this, of Stanford Rock Center, I just want to thank you all again for coming today. I know uh, you have a, a lot of things in, in your um, agendas. And I also want to welcome all our new students. I know we have a lot of the new Brazilian and Latin American students in the, in the crowd, so that's great for us. Welcome to Stanford. And I'll leave it to Marguerite to uh, make her welcome remarks. And we look forward to a great day today. So thank you again. My favorite Portuguese word is obrigada. Obrigada, Evan. Thank you, Professor Trentes. Thank you so much for hosting us. This is the, our third edition of our conference, and I'm so very honored that uh, you reserved your day to spend with us. I'm equally honored that uh, our speakers accepted our invitation to be here sharing their insights. Uh, a special thanks for those who came from far away to be here with us. I know many of you traveled from various places in, in the Bay Area and in the US 
to be here and share this day with us. Many thanks. And also, of course, to Ambassador Mauro Vieira and Secretary Virgilio that came all the way from Brazil, Secretary Virgilio and Ambassador Mauro Vieira from Washington, D.C. I'm honored to have you with us. Um, so I, I've been living in the Bay Area for about 16 years. And um, I started to feel that uh, I, I knew a lot of uh, Brazilians and I knew a lot of uh, people interested in Brazil. But there was not an organization connecting this community. So in 2010, I founded Bay Brazil. Basically, we are addressing two trends. One, the influx of uh, Brazilians that came into this area to study or to work and ended up building their careers and their lives here. Number two, Brazil has become a major market for the US. And that's what we're going to be discussing here today. Uh, I have a lot of people helping me to shape this organization. You will be meeting them throughout the day. They are my board members, volunteers. They volunteer their time because they believe that together we can create more opportunities between these two fantastic regions that we love, Brazil and the Bay Area. So um, we usually start our events. We do a lot of events. This is our major event. Um, and we do a lot of events. And we usually start with one of my favorite Brazilian products, music. With that, I would like to invite here Daniel Dalla Rosa, who is going to perform Baquianas Brasileiras from Vila Lobos. Morning, everyone. Thank you, Margarise. Thank you, everyone, for coming. So like Margarise mentioned, I figured instead of playing a high-paced Brazilian music show, this morning I would play something softer which is uh, Baquianas Brasileiras, composed by our most acclaimed composer, classical composer, Heitor Villalobos. And I'm going to be using a play along. which is uh, one of the things I enjoy doing in life, allow people to play with uh, bass music. So I have here a bass music. I will need uh, an assistance. Probably, Margaret, would you help me? Sure. What is Sorry. That um, let's just see if we have sound here. Thank you. 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you.